Action. All right, and we're back. Satan is a loser man, a loser man all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we thank God for prevailing in our circumstance. Um, a bit of technical issues, but we are happy to be back. Um, as you look on the panel, we have one addition, um, with Kelvis Joseph, all the way from Marigot St. John's, and we are very happy to have him on tonight. And he's gonna join our conversation, Let's Talk. And tonight, as we said before, um, we'll be having um, a lot of talking, a lot of discussing. It's a very practical program. And as a matter of fact, the meat of the matter um, is geared to help our young people 
to make sound proper decisions um, regardless of the situation as long as you have these tips you should be able to arrive um, at a solid choice that you can make to honor and follow Jesus um, now as I said before as young people we are faced with a multitude of scenarios and life decisions every single day yeah. um, sometimes we don't know what to do how to feel what decision to make we don't always have our parents around and expert around but we always have God we always have the Bible and tonight we want to empower youth that you can make proper decisions even when you feel isolated and all alone it is possible to make a right decision um, now tonight um, gentlemen we want to share some tips um, in terms of making a proper decision um, what is one of the first things that we need we need to know well, first of all you must know what what is the goal what do you want to achieve mm -hmm. yeah that's one of the first things you should know all right so so the first thing we must know the goal where are we going what we mm -hmm. want to achieve lovely mm -hmm. um secondly what, what's one of the the next questions we should be able to ask or figure out so to get to that particular goal we have to look at the problems that we we'll encounter encounter and how mm -hmm. to overcome them right so every scenario we should be able to properly identify what the issue or the problem is mm -hmm. so we have goal identifying clearly what the problem is um, next what what else you should consider the options and its consequences right yeah. so for every scenario the options um, there's not just one choice um, sometimes there are two choices sometimes there are more than two choices so we need to consider all of them and weigh them you know ap yeah. appropriately and right, then after that what, what do we do well probably most importantly we consult you know um the good book, right? The mm -hmm. Bible, That's right? right? In terms of guidance and principles, because we are speaking here from a religious perspective, right? What governs our lives as Christian? We are not, you know, going based on man's philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. We govern our lives based on what God would have, you know, laid down for us. So, in every decision, whatever aspect of your life, we must, you know, align our decision making with what you know is in keeping with you know god's principle for and ideas for our you know um the way we do things beautiful um so we just want to ensure that you get it tonight you know the first thing is what the goal what the goal is um secondly is the problems we, we need to know what the problem is um thirdly options and their consequences options and consequences fourthly the bible and what do we do next well knowing that we pray. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah. um, although we have all these steps outlined, why is it important to pray still? Mm -hmm. Because we can't do anything in our That's strength. Right. Yes. So we have the goal in mind. We know the problems. We have consulted the word. But for us to do whatever we have to do, we right. must ask God to help us yeah. do it. Because and there's nothing we can do on our own strength. That's right. And, and in addition, mm -hmm. I God love, you know, um, extended invitation that let us, let make a request be made known unto God, mm -hmm. all right? And um, ask, and it shall be given unto us. So, nice, nice. you know, it is the source of, you know, all wisdom, mm -hmm. right? So definitely, mm -hmm. the more we tap into that, then the better results, you know, will come away. Beautiful. And ah. by, by praying, mm -hmm. you get a decision. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> by praying, God reveals us to a decision. Um, now, tonight, we have six questions um, in our bowl, and we'll be dipping one by one, and whatever question we we select, we are going to attempt to put the steps to the test, right? Um, so tonight, friends, we have some hot, hot, hot questions. And we really want to see if on our own, as young people, if we are able to deal with all the problems that we face. Um, so by random selection, we're just going to choose one. Whichever question pops up, we're going to read it to you. And then we're going to, we're going to attempt to run the steps by them. We're going to start with Travis. Okay. And while you're opening up, um, Dolisha is saying sometimes there are situations where you feel as if you have no choice. And that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, but tonight we're still going to apply the steps to the situations. Mm -hmm. And maybe, just maybe, we might be able to see that there are choices, even sometimes when it does not appear that way. Okay, so the question that I picked is, as a youth, all I know is life in church. Hmm. Is it wrong to want to experience the world to see both sides of life? Question. Um, you you want to read that again? As a youth, mm -hmm. all I know is life in church. Is it wrong to want to experience the world to see both sides of life? Nice, mm -hmm. nice. So we're going to put the steps to the test. And we invite our viewing audience um, to, to participate with us. So you're a young person. Grew up in the church all your life. 
all you know is the church. Um, but you feel it, you want to experience a little slice of the world, your friends talking about it, family talking about it. You want to know what's up? Is it okay? Number one, can what's I, the first step? Can I start? Sure. Mm -hmm. No, you no. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the question reads, is it wrong to want to experience it? didn't say if I'm going to experience it, is if I want to. And right. the answer to that for me is yes. I know it's some weird, mm -hmm. but I would say yes because I think if I understand how the world operates and what's going on there, I could better relate to persons in the world. But the obvious answer is I would not be going into the world to experience the world. Mm -hmm. There are better ways to understand how the world works. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though persons that were in the world that came to church, they are a better are in a better situation to kind of minister to persons out there too because right. they actually could relate to them. But for me, I'll just find out about the world through persons that are in the world or who <laughs> were in the world and then use that information to witness to the people. But I myself would not go into the world mm -hmm. to experience the world in order to gain experience to minister to the people. Right. I'm not going to sin to prevent people from sinning. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I you see, you. Eh? my addition to that is, you know, I'm already in the church, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've been in Sabbath school, you know, I'm listening to sermons, studying the Bible, mm -hmm. and... The Bible warns us about the things in the world. It, the Bible tells us what the world contains, mm -hmm. and it tells us to abstain from it. So there is no reason why I should, well, um, you know, I believe most youths are faced with the temptation mm -hmm. of e wanting to experience. But then, I don't like now being faced with it. But the thing is, abstain, um, overcoming the temptation. Right. So, first of all, the Bible has already... Mm -hmm. So, so, so remember now, we, we, we want to go through the, the order, the oh, steps, right? Okay. We, we want to help our online audience to be able so to practice it. For um, some So in a situation like that, the goal. what is the goal? Temptation to go into the world or stay in the church? What should be our goal in a situation like that? So the goal the basically is, no matter the temptations that the world throw at us, mm -hmm. we should want to stay in the church. Right. Okay. So we want to remain faithful in God's house. Uh, Brother Kelvis, what yeah. would you say is the goal in that situation? Well, um, for the Christian, right, the goal is to make heaven his or her home. Right. All right. And trying to get part of the world there. <laughs> I think that, you know, we kind of put a spokes in your wheel. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Because you might go and you never come back. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. And then you risk, you know, um, of course, your desire to have eternal life. So mm -hmm. I think it's a very, you know, slippery slope to tread on. Mm -hmm. Right, if you could just, well, I'd probably get ahead of myself, you know, just stretch your imagination not too far that you know there'll be too many consequences, you know, mm -hmm. that will go against you know, um, mm -hmm. the decisions we take there. So, the better thing, you know, um, you're still where you are, and um, one of the um panelists would have said that you know, we need to learn from people's mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, people say, Let me make my own mistake, but I find that is somewhat barbaric. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if that's the case, then the world would stand still. Yeah. <laughs> right? We build on past experiences, you know, from people. So that's right. We don't have to go the same way to gain experience. No. All right. And that's something, you know, we as young people must understand. So I think, you know, um, when we look around, you know, from a broad perspective, it is much more beneficial to us, you know, to remain, you know, as we say, within the white line of safety, mm -hmm. you know, to stay on the straight and narrow path. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so to a youth watching tonight, it's normal that we may have the, the tendency to wonder what mm -hmm. the world out there is like. Yeah. Um, so we want to talk real tonight. So it's not a sin uh, being entertained with these thoughts, but at the end of the day, we make it our ultimate goal. We not want to make good. heaven our home. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Good. Um, mm -hmm. May I say we should push our prayer then? Yes. On the list. Mm -hmm. We should push our prayer to maybe the second step. Right. Because... Mm -hmm. Sometimes by the time we reach to prayer, if we follow hmm. this, <laughs> they might go outside already. They, they might go outside already. So, <laughs> so you yeah. need to pray initially. Yeah. Um, w w once you realize that you, you have yeah. those challenges. Nice, yes. nice, nice. Um, so let's just switch it on both sides quickly. Um, what are the disadvantages or the advantages of staying in church all your life? What are the advantages? Like the, the disadvantages for me, like what I was saying is that you don't gain experience in the world. So... Mm -hmm. You're relating to people out there might be a little bad. 
Because okay. some people I just can't relate to because I was living in the church all my life. Mm-hmm. I can't go up to someone and say, yo, I know your pain and this and that and that. Right, it, right, right, right. They wouldn't feel me. Okay. But okay. persons who are already there, who came out of that situation, mm-hmm. can better relate to someone there and mm-hmm. therefore they could bring them to the light right, better right. than I can. Right. But I wouldn't say that I don't have a chance. Because I could learn from someone's experience right. and use that in my ministry mm-hmm. to help persons mm-hmm. there to come to church. You know, um, I, want, I want to show something to Brother Kilvis. Yeah. <laughs> um, building on what you just said there, um, let's look at Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, now, he, his life was in the church. Exactly. Was, he, was, was he able to relate to people from all walks of life? Well, yes, the Bible said that, you know, you know quite clearly that, you know, he mingled with men, you know, um, designed they're very good and he sympathized with us, mm-hmm. all right? And um, that is why we must read, you know, as young people, and especially, you know, the Bible. You know, oftentimes people might deem the Bible as, you know, outdated, you know, mm-hmm. you really you know, in a postmodern era, but if you really look at the Bible, you know, in a critical way, you can find every possible solution, right? Or every possible, you know, situation in terms of human existence, right? Or human experiences, whereby you can, um, Basically, you know, um, grasp some lesson, right? Or you can um, get some form of, you know, understanding as to, you know, what to transpire. We look at people, they made bad mistakes, or they made bad choices, Mm -hmm. and we saw the consequences, right? So we have to make it contemporaneous, right? You know, bring the Bible in our context and those things. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the things, you know, probably don't see. We just see it as, you know, a book with probably some stories, you know, probably over 2,000 years ago. Yeah. But we don't try to, you know, contextualize it. And um, that's one of the things, you know, we probably have to seek to improve, you know, to bring it in our context and those things. Right. Because we can identify it, a lot of experiences mm-hmm. people go through today, and then we can pinpoint, you know, very clearly from the Bible, well, here's a similar situation, right? We talk about, I don't want to start, you know, adultery and, you know, the same homosexual issue, just yeah. name it. You can find many different, you know, accounts in the Bible whereby we can learn, you know, from those things. So we are better equipped, you know, to mm-hmm. basically, you know, interact with people and understand where they're coming from. Right. So, so Jumal, yeah. if Jesus were to walk um, in these streets today, hmm. um, <laughs> even as you have shoulders with prostitutes, wine bibbers, gluttonous um, persons, where do you think we would see Jesus in our world today? Where would he go? Who would he be around? Well... To me, he'll be doing the same thing as he was doing back when he was a nun before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because his his goal is to save those who are lost. Mm-hmm. So he will try his best to save those who are out on the world. Right. So so he so in other words, he would not be just in the church on Sabbath, nah. Wednesday, Sunday, nah. but he's so going to be around ch- people. Yeah, among people mingling. In the church, so so in other words, you don't have to necessarily compromise to get experience in the world, um, because we go to work, mm-hmm. we travel on buses. And we go to school and we, we meet a multitude of people. We come from communities. Mm-hmm. And that gives us an, an, an opportunity to mix and mingle with different um, persons. Pastor, as you said that, we have a comment um, from mm-hmm. Sister Cassandra, which actually expounds mm-hmm. what you just said. I, w- I will read it. Mm-hmm. Life in church doesn't blind us from the world. S- school and workplaces give us a good view of the world Lovely. as we interact with others. Sometimes, involuntarily, we taste the world. Making a decision to be fully part of the world is to decide to not serve God. Mm -hmm. For we cannot serve two masters. Definitely, and that is so correct, Pastor, because the Bible again rightly said that we are in this world, right? So we're going to interact with people. Mm -hmm. And we should not isolate ourselves, you know. That is not good Christianity. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And one of the things I was supposed to mention of that, the Bible says Christ was tempted in all manner as we are, mm-hmm. yet without sin. Mm-hmm. All right? You know, probably you could put some, you know, theology on this, whether he had sexual, you know, feelings, mm-hmm. right? Some people mm-hmm. don't think about Christ as a young man. <laughs> yeah. you know, yes, you yeah. Yeah. But if the Bible says, you know, he was tempted in all manner as we are, yet without sin, mm-hmm. he was a human being, you know? Yeah. So I think the same, you know, um, testosterone, you know, run through his blood and mm-hmm. those things. So, yeah, yeah. you know, let us not try to be oblivion and, you know, try to um see that probably that is, you know, too holy that, you know. <laughs> True. Yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, if Christ was tempted on those things, 
right? And we know he was tempted to the max, mm -hmm. and he never yield, mm -hmm. right? And he promised to give us that strength as well. Then you know we should make use of that. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. um, Telson is saying we must understand that no matter how dim things may be in the church, it will never be better in the no, world. Definitely, definitely. Um, just quickly before we go to the next question, what are some Bible characters, Daniel, that we could get? Um, probably persons who ventured into the world. What was the experience like? Do we have any Bible characters that Samson. give us some information there? Mm -hmm. Samson was one. Samson. All right, so tell us Samson's story. What happened to him? <laughs> Samson thought mm -hmm. that being in the church was enough. Right. He didn't want a wife in the church. Mm -hmm. He didn't want... He wanted to experience us as well because he thought the church life was boring, for instance. Right. So he decided to move out. Mm -hmm. And to cut it short, he started in the end. He lost. He almost. He lost everything. Mm -hmm. He lost his strength, mm -hmm. his sight, mm -hmm. and mostly he lost his life. So right. So sometimes the the option that seems best mm -hmm. is not always best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Samson had so much to lose, and yeah, yeah. it really doesn't make sense. Um, I like to um speak about one of the problems, right? But um, but okay, this spoke about they might not come back. Mm -hmm. But they might come back, but we don't. Mm -hmm. Questioning what the Bible says, mm -hmm. questioning um, you know um, what the spirit of prophecy says. In addition, yeah, and trying to trying to get others to 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 experience it also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so it really alters our faith and our walk with God. Yeah, very true. Mm -hmm. All right, we go to another our next question. Oh, but before we go ahead, though. Yeah, yeah, I was going to make reference to a couple more characters. Eh? But no, even though the characters, the Bible, remember, kind of said the Bible is one of the things that we consult in a situation like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to give a text, mm -hmm. he mentioned something, and I just wanted to quote it from the Bible. It says in Matthew six twenty four, "No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love, love the other." Love mm -hmm. yeah. Right, so, definitely. So um, very very pertinently, right? Well, it's a parable with the whole history of the prodigal son. You know, he thought, well, this house probably kept him in a straight jacket. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it was time for him, you know, to live life, as they say, have a fling and a sting. So he asked his father for his inheritance. And the Bible says, well, he went to a far country, right? And, you know, we look at our context in our time, ever so often, that's how some people behave, you know. When they really want to put on something massive, they go to a far place. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and then the Bible says he squandered all that he had, and when... His friend was well, just there when he had the money. But after, you know, he lost everything, you know, there was no friend. And, you know, he got so bad that the Bible say he virtually eat, you know, um, he picks food and those things. <laughs> you know, that may not be our case, but what is basically saying, you're reaching the rock bottom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And um, it's only there and there he came to his, he finally came to his sense, you know, praise God. And, um, you know, he said, well, look, my father have, you know, all these riches and those things, you know, life, nice. And then he brought himself to that situation mm -hmm. and then he went back to his father so we might think you know living in the arms of god you know probably to go off to the things of the world might be more attractive but as old people say not everything that we taste will understand that's right mm -hmm. and the that's devil right. has a very unique way of you know color um decorating the things of the world but after all yeah. afterwards after um after what recognize it's just you know um shame right that would be followed so we have to be very careful and I always like to make reference to when he took Christ upon you know, the pinnacle and he showed him all the kingdoms mm -hmm. of the world. Yeah. And that is what the devil is showing, you know, yeah. all the beautiful things, quote unquote. But he doesn't show him AIDS, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He never showed him, you know, teenage pregnancy, a drug, you know, a prostitution, this thing. He showed him all the glory of the world, the Bible say. But, you know, thank God that he saw, you know, his intention on this thing. And we really must see the devil for he is. Even Solomon, I don't think any one of us could put our feet you know, in Solomon's shoe, where, you know, wealth is concerned or experience, right? The Bible, Solomon tried everything the Bible said under the sun. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, he said they're all vanity, vanity and vexation of spirit. And if Solomon could say that, I think, you know, we should put that as a say, what in our wine. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely. And so, also, one. Mm -hmm. the older folks must be careful when it comes to testimonies. When I say that, those that was in the world coming in. Yeah. Because I'm not a painter, Peter, that the world is so good. Right. Mm -hmm. Although they're talking about the church or the church better, but they paint the picture at first. Oh, I was in the world, blah, blah, blah. And they're making it seem so good that 
a youth now. Well, maybe also I want to go in, go out, and come back. Come back. Yeah. 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 So, so, I might have a similar story like the, that person. The youth, the youth yeah. have to be, I say the youth, the older folks have to be careful yeah. when okay. they paint the giving picture. Yeah. testimony yeah. that how they paint in a picture mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. us as the younger folks. So we should never glorify sin. Yeah. yeah. Never glorify sin. I want to add just one um, other Bible example. Mm-hmm. Saul. Right. Saul was, well, at the beginning, you know, Saul was persecuting the church. Um, well, that's when he was Paul. Mm-hmm. He was persecuting the church of God, and then he had a... Yeah, he was Saul when he was persecuting the church. He was Saul first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was Saul first <laughs> when he was persecuting the church, and then he got a life-changing moment when he experienced the uh, presence of God. Yeah, yeah, and he was con- con- um, converted. converted, yes. But afterwards... When he went to the to the witch uh, uh, to the sorcerer, yeah, well, 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 that, that is a two different Saul. Saul. That's that, that, that Saul the king. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Saul the king originally was a godly king. Yeah. So I, I, I think probably that was the story you want to allude to, and he destroyed all sorts different. of witchcraft and sorcery. Okay. But then after he, you know, he lost out on his original mm-hmm. relationship okay. with God. Yeah. He went back and dabbled in mm-hmm. sin and. He backslided and basically. Then, yeah, and then. But he, he never came back. Never, yeah, he never, he came, never back. came back. That's, that was the point yeah. I shared to be yeah. He yeah. never came back. He never came and back. then, as a result of that, um, the Bible said that he, um, the Holy Spirit le- left him. Left him, yeah. The prophet of God, God didn't just communicate with him again because mm-hmm. he used to use the prophet to communicate with him yeah. before. Yeah, so he lost it on that. Yeah, he lost it on that. Alright, lovely. So that was just our, our warm up question yeah. there. And I'm strongly mm-hmm. saying, staying in church holistically, yeah. not just being there what? Physically. physically. We have a lot of physical people in church, you know, every <laughs> Sabbath morning, yeah. Wednesday, Sunday night. Mm. Um, but she's saying, we must also guard against bringing the world, world into the church. Into the church. Yes. Very well, very well. Mm. Um, so the goal tonight, we want to stay on the straight and narrow. And mm-hmm. what God says, that's what we want to follow. We don't want to dabble in the sins of the world. Amen. We walk among the people of the world. We have to bring light to them. And of course, we get experience. But we are never to compromise or walk with God. Um, Jamal, what was the, the question you got there? Well, the question I got reads, as a young single adult... All right, so Jamal, take your breath. Take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that is a serious question. Yeah, take yeah. a deep breath. Okay. G- give me a preacher's voice. <laughs> Meditate and read carefully and slowly. Go on. As a young single adult, my sex drive feels overpowering. How do I manage my sex drive? Let me let me repeat. Yeah, let repeat, me repeat. It yes. For emphasis. As a young single adult, my sex drive feels overpowering. Okay. How do I manage my sex drive? So Daniel, question. That's a scenario, right? Is that a real question you'd face? Hmm. Yes, everybody would face that. Everybody would face that. <laughs> um, so, so you're not asking an imaginary <laughs> pie in the sky question. Real, real, real talk. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And even though Brother Kelvis and myself, we married now, but we walked those roads <laughs> before. Teenagers growing up, we know, we know what it is. Mm-hmm. And we, we all are healthy male, I would suppose, I would assume. Mm-hmm. And um, so we could identify and, you know, sympathize with somebody going through a situation like that. Um, so, in dealing with our sex drive, what is our ultimate goal? How, how do you say, Travis? What is the goal? Although sex drive is strong as a, as a young person, what is the goal? Well, the goal is to stay pure as you can be in a sex-filled world. Right. That's the main <laughs> goal. So yeah, it's a sex-filled, sex-saturated world, but yeah. the, the goal is sexual purity. purity. Yeah, um, so cool. although the drive is there, we must always have that at the forefront of our mind, that the goal by God's grace and His strength is to purity. Pure, mm-hmm. All right. Um, so after we establish the goal, what, what, what next? We, we want to unpack that now. So the problems we will be facing, mm-hmm. how to get to that goal. So it's either through abstinence. So yeah, abstain. Mm-hmm. Through probably masturbation. Okay, mm-hmm. real talk. Or yeah. uh, mm-hmm. probably through having sex. Um, so, so that's the three options? That's the three options. Yes. So either you abstain totally. Yeah. Um, some you, you may turn to things like masturbation, mm-hmm. or some persons might actually do go, act. go to the act of, uh, of doing sex. So we want to go through... Also, just to cut you a little bit, my mm-hmm. apologies. But I also heard this, you know, bizarre story that this guy, you know, took it to the extreme that, you know, well, he wanted to abstain and he was losing the fight and he actually amputated his penis. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard this story. Wow. You know? yeah. yeah, and I think it's a, a true story. 
Wow. That, that sounds like a, a young man who really wanted to overcome. <laughs> um, but, but you man, we don't want that to be the case for you, <laughs> no, right? So no way, no. We, we want you to no grow way. nice and have yeah. a nice, no amputation tonight. No way, no We want to manage <laughs> the fire until it's ready to yeah. blaze, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> so we want to look at the consequences. <laughs> Abstinence, <laughs> masturbation, sex. So let, let's start with, let's start with masturbation. Are there any benefits or any advantages or disadvantages? You have a high sex drive, feels overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Well, any advantages there? To tell the honest truth, masturbation basically will amp up that sex drive. Yeah. yeah. It won't damp it down mm-hmm. at all. Speaking of a biological standpoint, mm-hmm. the the hormones that are involved will be produced when you masturbate. Yeah. So it's not and like the Right, so it's not like you're, you're, you're controlling the problem by doing it, just mm. amping it up even more. So it's like you're throwing gasoline on the fire. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so to our youth listening out there, sometimes masturbation may seem to be the easy way out to deal with the drive. But based on what we are hearing from a med school student here, it actually makes it worse, right? So the testosterone would be... Um, Pumping even more. And a matter of fact, more. as a result of that, it's like a drug. Once you start doing it, Mm-hmm. It'll be hard to stop. Yeah, exactly. so, so we have two solid points. Here. Number one, you actually strengthen the sex drive when you masturbate. Right. Um, number two, it actually becomes an addiction. Exactly. So as we see going down that road, it actually makes the problem worse. worse. Yeah. Um, you, you know, Brother Kelvin, sometimes we hear young men, especially, even young ladies say, I will choose the lesser evil. Mm-hmm. So let us say, <laughs> the sex drive is there. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to have sex. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get nobody pregnant. I don't want to get no STD. I don't want to sit in that way. So masturbate. Yeah. So, <laughs> would you encourage a young person to go the less of the two evils? Again, Paris, um, you see, who do we live for, right? Mm-hmm. When we take a, you know, God's ideal, then that might be the thing to do, but Again, we seek to please God, mm-hmm. right? The Bible says marriage is honorable and, all, and the bed undefined. Right. So marriage is between two people, of course, man and woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you masturbate, and basically you're having sex yourself. yourself. Yeah. yeah. And that in itself is selfishness. Right. All right? <laughs> and you preventing yourself from attaching probably, well, as a man to a lady. Mm-hmm. All right? Because you giving yourself pleasure so in some ways you know you kind of don't play the ready for of a lady in your life and those things so i think god will not be pleased with that right right, right because right. he created sex drive and praise god if your sex drive is in arm um, is intact right <laughs> because that is part of you know your your health yeah all right because i'm um, i'm hearing a lot of doctors saying that's one of the problems facing men these days right and young men in the 30s and even the 20s you know they're coming down with ed mm. all right and they might walk around with the chest, but who knows what is happening down there. So if that is intact, you know, praise God. Mm-hmm. But you know, um, put it in the hands of God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Bring your body under subjection as yeah. the Bible says. Present your body a living sacrifice. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just to share with um our young persons there, um probably you, you want to know practically, is it really possible to be sexually pure? What can I actually do? Um, when the urges come, when the floods come. How do I raise up the standard for them? Mm-hmm. So I could give one example. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. So the thing that causes a sex drive, like we said before, is hormones that are being pumped in the body. Right. What you can do is like do exercises mm-hmm. that will produce a different hormone. Okay. And that will, for you say, it will um, lessen the concentration of mm-hmm. the sex hormone mm-hmm. in your body. So adrenaline will be pumped when you're exercising and that will lessen the concentration of the sex hormone that is actually okay. going around in the body. So that's just one way of diverting your attention away from that sex drive mm-hmm. into something more productive, which will nice. help you in the long run. Nice, nice, mm-hmm. nice, nice. So exercise. Um, and we want to hear from the online audience. What are some ways young people can, um, what are some things that they can do to help face, you know, the sex drive, you know, even in the, the youthful stage. So one, exercise. Mm-hmm. And pass um don't think for once that um, something is wrong with you, all right, as a young person. And the world would have given people the misconception that everybody's doing it, mm-hmm. all right? Mm-hmm. So if I do it, then that is not a problem, all right? So know that not everybody doing it, right? We must understand that. Mm-hmm. In addition, you know, um, we live in a, well, 
sex infested world all around you know advertisement you look at posters there is a lady you know in very skimpy clothing with a star right? yeah you look at the television and it's at the fingertip you know on the phone the songs mm -hmm. so you really have to be on the piano cue yeah you know saturate your mind your mind with positive things yeah yeah one of the things you know young people do is that they look at pornography Mm -hmm. Now that is like adding insult to injury. Yeah, yeah, make it All right, worse. because Travis would have rightly said about you know the secretion or the production of you know testosterone and those things, right? That will heighten your know, sexual activity. And of course, men they are visual beings on those things. Yeah. And if you look at those things, of course, you're making matters much more worse. difficult to you, yeah. right? You basically you know undermine your resistance. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you know cease you know from looking at those things, mm -hmm. and even the songs you listen to. All right, and be around positive people. Mm -hmm. Right, try not to be by yourself, you know, when the urges come and understand, you know, go there in the open, go play soccer, you know, get involved in sports. Yeah, yeah. Right, don't just sit there as a coach potato, you know, around the television, on the computer. That is, you know, invitation, you know, yeah. probably to go the next step. Yeah, and um, it, it may sound also weird, um, very good points. Um, there was a young man um, recently married, and um, you're speaking to him, you know, he, he actually mm -hmm. said he prayed that God will remove his sex drive on before <laughs> marriage. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we prayed. When marriage, you know, God will restore it. Mm -hmm. And God answered the prayer. So nothing is too big or too small to put in the hands of God. If it feels overwhelming, you could, you could have a conversation with God. God, I'm really fighting it. Help me. Mm -hmm. um, just keep me at bay. Give me, you know, peace of mind, pure thoughts. I don't really need this yeah. now. At the <laughs> right time, resurface it, you know. <laughs> um, so we could pray. Um, so, some people may laugh at that. Um, but God really he answers prayer. Sure. Um, we just want to take some of the online um, comments. Nisi Abatis is saying, what's she saying there, Daniel? Okay. Um, Nisi Abatis, um, what's she saying? When you have the urge, take a bath to cool down. <laughs> um, does that work? <laughs> Travis, take a, a bath <laughs> and a cold shower? Different so different folks. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it will work, but... I it's mean, what I try. <laughs> it's what I try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Chanel Chase is saying, change your mind, focus. Hmm. by getting involved in something else very true yeah. Um, yeah, like yeah, for the energy is there um de de definitely definitely I just like to, oh. this feeling would pass because it don't last forever yeah right so yeah. understand that you know yeah you might think well boy this would get me crazy yeah, and you know. you know again society boy you know thing will go up in your back and <laughs> yes. yeah, a lot of foolishness, you know, and then yeah, you yeah, listen yeah. to that, you wonder, well, you why if I don't give in, you know, <laughs> yeah, I might just yeah. explode. <laughs> but that is just normal biological behavior. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. That will pass. Yeah. Right? You just have to, you know, um do self control. Yeah. Exactly. Self control, right? Yeah. That is where you know we want to um you know we want to be and always remember Joseph. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, we must take the Bible for what it is. You know, we were talking about it, the Bible, some people not seeing it being relevant, but it is. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. picture yourself, you know, Joseph virtually being, you know, caressed and, you know, trangled by a lady, but, you know, he said, well, how can I do this evil mm -hmm. thing? And, you know, I sin against my God. So right. we seek to please God, not our friends, not even ourselves. Yeah. Right? That is, you know, the ultimate, you know, um, responsibility of all. Uh, uh, we as Christians, right? All of our activities, whatever we do, we seek to please God. Yeah. And if God, you know, is in our lives, then we wouldn't do things that would displease Him. Sure. And, and building on, before you go, yeah. building on what Kelly said, a text to back it up is First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And it okay. says, There has no temptation mm -hmm. taken you, True. but such as is common to man. Very well. Mm -hmm. But God is faithful, who will not suffer mm -hmm. you to be tempted above oh, all He yeah, has yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. with the temptation make also a make up. a way to escape yeah, that he may be. Yeah, some people don't make a way past them. Yeah. It's right? true, it's true. And, and you know, that text reminds us that God puts so mm -hmm. many things in place for us. Yeah, no. Nothing we go through is too, too much, much for us. Mm -hmm. He always makes a way of escape, even if it seems too much for us. Mm -hmm. So there is no reason to fall for temptation. Uh, I just want to say good night and welcome to Pastor Boy. And I saw that he joined us. And I pray that he's going to share some of his pastoral experience with us. <laughs> um, we're treading in some deep waters here tonight. Mm -hmm. And we are very happy for the responses that we received thus far. Um, now, someone is saying that there is a question here. They wish it is addressed. And I'm hoping that Pastor Boyd will help us. Um, Chadwick is saying, clarify for the public. Um, first question, is masturbation a sin? And uh, I think that was cleared up. And we're saying yes. yes um, you describe it as having um, solo sex, sex or sex with yeah. yourself. 
and God ordained that sexual energies be shared within not just man and woman, but husband and wife. I mean, a legal, holy bond and, and a pledge for a lifetime. So, Be off the bat, it's wrong. Yeah, because I also would have heard cases where even people would have entered marriage, right? And they still face a problem, all right? So, you cannot take away now for them giving over to the next partner because you go both ways, eh? because yeah. I understand even ladies masturbate themselves as well. Okay. You know, so if you do things, you know, um, a particular action that will take away, you know, from giving yourself totally over to your partner, all right, then this is the space into God understand because you're supposed to render to your wife as husband, yeah. you know, true belief, um, benevolence and this thing. So, right? so basically what you are, you are actually addressing the second part of the question. Yeah. Um, he's actually saying in marriage, so you are saying now that a husband or a wife should not divert their energies from each other alone, but they should really utilize um, that, that intimate moments together. Definitely. So it's wrong if a husband masturbates. Yeah. And it's, why it's wrong if a wife masturbates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another thing too, just to add to, um, we know that committing adultery could be, happen in your mind, right? In your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually when you masturbate, you not you <laughs> masturbate thinking of having sex with somebody at that time. Mm. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. When you masturbate and you're thinking of having sex with somebody, so actually you're committing adultery mm -hmm. during the act by yeah. thinking of having sex with somebody. Right. But, but someone may challenge you. Mm -hmm. What if I'm simply having a, a biological reaction and um, masturbation occurs with no thoughts in the head? Is that wrong? I don't well, think that happens. I, I have never heard anybody say that it ever happens. <laughs> but, but if it some, does... <laughs> yeah, sorry, right? God would have designed the human body to take care of itself mm -hmm. because yeah. as men we have what is called nocturnal emission yeah. right and this is not masturbation so yeah. if quote unquote well whatever we'll feeling feel builds up too much then yeah. God allow the body to release itself right all right, right. so if that doesn't happen then you could cope yeah. all right you could yeah. cope. so God knows mm -hmm. the limit definitely and yeah. when the limit is reached God has a natural outlet mm -hmm. when dreams nice somebody you could, you could also somebody could also defend herself by saying what if he or she isn't of faith? That's better than cheating. Okay. Can you reply to that? That's yeah. in husband and wife? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they masturbate to each other? No. no. Um, the question is like, the comment is like, um, as a husband, the wife don't want to, mm -hmm. like, to commit to the sex or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, it's better than cheating. Mm. Right, right, right. I get you. So, yeah. so the husband, wants to have sex yes but the wife doesn't. doesn't so the wife the husband masturbates as a result he does not want to cheat yeah uh, now, now we go back to the bible <laughs> the, the bible says that um that we should not defraud one another mm -hmm. and for example um the, the husband body does not belong to, to him but his wife, wife. Yeah. and the wife's yeah. body does not belong to her but her husband so under regular circumstance um it is not healthy for husband or wife to deprive each other that, that's point number one however in cases of sickness, um, in cases where there is um, probably physical absence, mm -hmm. um, now in marriage, you, you know, the vows say for better or for worse. You have a <laughs> sick spouse, um, they, they can't have sex at the moment. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, is masturbation an option? Mm -hmm. No. No. Question? What is wrong is wrong? What is wrong is wrong. Yeah. Because um, um, they ask him there, um, so <laughs> what if a husband, uh, you know, wife travel and, you know, you have to study, etc., probably go on some other venture, probably right. go on a your evangelistic effort. <laughs> evangelistic. You should just Skype and masturbate, you know? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> the thing is self-control parts, right? Yes. Because not always you'll have your spouse at your disposal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Things happen. You know, you travel probably for church, you know, related, you know, activities and this thing. Right? You would see ladies and this thing. But, you know, you please God. So, you have yeah. to bring your body under subjection, right? Yeah. Yeah. Regardless as to how you feel and this thing. Your body belongs to your wife and Skype. Eh? Skype. No, but at the same time, right? You're developing this as we would have um a little earlier on, you know, like sex with yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you pleasure yourself, your wife doesn't know how you feel. Alright? And uh, just to add here, right, by sitting here, this come to me. You see, that might even create problems because for the man pleasure himself if the wife comes up short then he sees her in a different light mm -hmm. right 
because people know the body then if you want to put it that way mm-hmm. so if the man masturbating himself and the wife cannot pressure him as how he think he could pressure himself he might think the wife is incompetent i get you I but get you. we I get you. teaching um in terms of you know sex education you know marriage comes so that yeah you know you explore together yeah. You talk of your likes and your dislikes on those things and you're on each other, right? Yeah. But you doing that yourself like you basically um you make yourself like you become a professional to yourself mm-hmm. and not to your wife on those things. So that means you don't need a wife. <laughs> and, and even in addition to that now Skype, um no we know that we live in a world that is not safe whenever it comes to internet. That's the next and thing. Some couple mm-hmm. might be thinking that they are enjoying an intimate moment between themselves. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you know watch things get get hacked. Um, so many times you see things mm-hmm. on in the public of between husband mm-hmm. and wife. What should have mm-hmm. been private. So we we can't encourage your brother to do that because mm-hmm. you never know what could, what could happen even in an event like that. Yeah. Um, so we really want to encourage you, um, by God's grace, to you know abstain from those, even though they they, they may seem um, practical, convenient at mm-hmm. the moment. Um, you know, if these things go, out, it could really really. You know, mess up your life, your legacy, um, your name, your your, your you know your, your your pride. Your mm-hmm. you know, it's a, an embarrassing Definitely situation to be in. Um, so so it's it's wise. It's yes. very wise to, um, um, to, to to try to stay away from these things. Um, I like to share text. Mm-hmm. Share text with us. First Corinthians chapter six verse eighteen. What does it say? Flee sexual immorality. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual Immorality sins against his own body. Against his own mm-hmm. body. Very well, very well, very well. <coughs> um, we just want to take a comment from Sister Shanti. We go to our next question. Then we take an item of special music. Um, Shanti is saying, um, we say abstinence, but we have to have a very strong connection with God and mindset to remain pure. And um, tonight we don't want to water it down for young people. Staying sexually pure, it's a challenge. Maybe. It's a battle. Mm-hmm. You have to be walking and praying. Some of them as men, you have to walk with your head up in the sky. <laughs> Temptations are all around us. And we don't want it to seem that just pray, just exercise, take a shower, and that's that. You, know, you have to fight. <laughs> you have to beg. You have to plead. You know, you, you have to go to, to, to the bad. You should never, you know, take it for granted at any moment, you know. <laughs> um, it, it's an ongoing struggle. But <laughs> God is able at yeah, the end of the day. Um, yes, I, like, I could testify to that, right? Because one of the ways I was able to maintain is by having a strong connection with God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I knew what I stand for. I knew what yeah. I believe in. And also, like, to add that, you know, um, uh, men may say that the temptation is there. Mm-hmm. Um, these days, people dressing naked. True, true. Yeah, people dressing naked these mm-hmm. days. And then um, I would like to add, that doesn't turn, I don't know how that would turn somebody on. To go to have sex with somebody who dressed naked for everybody else to see. Right, right. The, the, the thing is, we live in a sick <laughs> world. <laughs> so, what might be displeasing to you, yeah. people mm-hmm. trying to keep a pure yeah. mind, to the carnal yeah. mind, that is, as you say, that's food, that's yeah. a meal there. Mm-hmm. So, it's good to keep the mind fresh and pure okay. so you know, we'll never be attracted um, to, to, such, to such things. Um, let's go to our bowl. We go now. Oh, ask for that. supposed to um, the consequences, right? Uh-huh. Well, when it comes to. Um, sexual activities the consequences go far and wide you know yeah these days we don't hear much about hiv and those things but i know it's still alive of course and you know um, because of that you know so many persons you know are affected probably not so much so here but um in africa sometimes children lose both parents yeah all right and that is a struggle for themselves you know the result you know to um probably prostitution for themselves you know to go buy and those things mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then you know to treat a pay uh HIV patient is very costly, very all right? So that would be, you know, in terms of financial burden yeah. on the family and this thing. Yeah. But they say young people are wise now, so yeah. they would use protection, <laughs> <Condoms>. right? <laughs> yeah, condoms and those things. And that is what, you know, society, you know, offers. Yeah. But God principle is what abstinence and those things, yeah. Yeah. right? What if you die in the act? Mm. You see, you're risking your salvation here. Yeah. Yes. And you know, some guys, they set up themselves they turn the key they go wherever who knows you're going to come back mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right so we have to be very careful at the end of the day you know if god should come now what would be my position that's right all right and that's if you're guided by that then i don't think we could go so far you know to cause us you know um, to do things that we want to yeah we always seek to please god the bible says our sin shall find you out. 
Mm -hmm. Right? And you cannot hide from God. You can hide from the pastor, you know, whoever. But God eyes, you know, such through and through in the earth. So let us understand that, especially yeah. as young people. And adults as well. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, adults as well. Yeah. Before we go to our next question, um, very interesting um, comments here um, from Nova Null. But the health field says masturbation has health benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we also know we, we have a, a, mm -hmm. a, a med school student that could, that could help us. Yeah, then again, mm -hmm. sex has health benefits as well. Exactly. You don't about to say sex to <laughs> <laughs> any other body. Yeah. Then, yeah. Everything has its place. So, yeah. Pastor, nothing cannot be the Bible. That's All right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because today we might say one thing. And tomorrow, you know, the health professionals would see another thing and thing. Yeah, true. You know, the devil is behind a lot of things there. Eh? And one of the things I, I read in a book, they say anything you want research to show, it could show it, as long as you pay the right people. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> it's true. It's people true. pushing sex, you know, to make it look like acceptable on those things. Yeah. You know, I heard one time a boat driver say, well, what are you bothering them young people for? Just tell them use a condom, you know, a boat driver. So I'm wondering if he has daughters on those things. Mm, yeah. Because... Young people getting sexually active, right, at a very tender age, especially young ladies, they run the risk of cervical cancer. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you know that cancer is one of the things that is um, basically responsible probably for the number one death, right, in Grenada. Mm -hmm. All right? And the body's not developed on this thing. So they put themselves under stress. Mm -hmm. And it takes away from, you know, other parts of your life, like excelling in school because it is addictive, you know, they would say. Mm -hmm. So you see them coming and sleeping because they had long nights on this thing. God knows what they would have done. So it affects other parts of their life on yeah, this thing. Yeah, yeah. And because of that, no, what they would have done in the youthful years prevent them from getting yeah. you know, a good life partner thereafter. Yeah. Definitely. Um, we just want to welcome um, Spice Lady Brave Boy, Ciara Gamir. Thanks for joining us. And um, we're happy for those who would have contributed thus far. Um, so we just want to go to our question bowl. Um, Daniel, I think you had a question. Let us see <coughs> what the next question has to offer. I am really trying to walk with God. <laughs> I do daily devotion, prayer and service. Mm -hmm. However, I still feel unsure about my salvation. Mm -hmm. What do I know? How do I know if I'm saved? All right, you want to read it? Just a little louder for us. I am really trying to walk in... Sorry. I am really trying in my walk with God. Right. I do daily devotion, mm. prayer, and service. Mm -hmm. However, I still feel unsure about my salvation. How do I know if I am saved? Very, very good question. As a young man, um, as a teenager, I battle with that question. Me too. How do I know if I'm saved? It's like you're trying, <laughs> you're reading Bible, you're praying, you're active in church. <laughs> but you know, a little question in your mind. Why if Jesus come? No, boy. Amen. Where are you going, boy? Hey, we're not here. And um, I'm sure that for many young persons out there, you wonder, you're in the struggle as a young person, um, you fail, you make mistakes, um, you ask God for forgiveness, you repent, you keep trying again. The Bible says a just man falls seven times, but mm -hmm. he rises right. up again. Definitely. How can we be assured that we are in a saving relationship with God? Well, first, mm -hmm. if, if the person saying this is true to what they're saying, mm -hmm. they're saying that should be enough. That should be enough. Yeah. So you're doing devotion, they're praying, and they're serving. They're doing devotion, they're praying, they're doing their service, that, that could be community service, helping right. somebody. And, but, the, but then again, they feel unsure about their salvation. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. So that could, this part, that, that could be the part they could work on, maybe mm -hmm. talk to their pastor, talk to somebody, talk yeah. to another person. But yeah. if they answer about the first part, yeah. that should be yes. a step. So I guess so I like to Jamal, you want to say something? Uh, um, daily devotion, prayer and service doesn't guarantee salvation, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Why not? Um I could have devotion anytime. Mm -hmm. I could always pray and I could always go to church service. I could help anybody. But at least you but you are not, we are not saved by works. No, exactly. I know exactly. We are not saved by works. You you, you know one of the passages that could put things in perspective is John 3.16. Mm -hmm. um, it's a passage that one might say abuse and use so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, if we really go back to the truest essence, um, it's packed with meaning. Um, God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave 
whosoever chooses will have everlasting life. Yeah. Yeah. So point number one, salvation is a free gift. Mm -hmm. Devotion can give you that. Mm -hmm. Prayer can give you that. Mm -hmm. Service can give you that. And whenever we are looking towards our efforts, we will always feel unsure of our, 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 our salvation. Because salvation is a gift that God gives. And nothing I could do. I could preach a million and one sermon, mm -hmm. baptize a million people, go to church every Sabbath. I could win Pastor the Year Award, but I could still go in hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, first thing, salvation has nothing to do with works. Mm -hmm. um, what, what else can we say? How can we answer that question? You see, the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, shall and thou shalt be saved. Believe. All right? And belief is not just a mental process, it is reflecting our actions. Right. Right? So, if we walk, you know, after the principles and precepts of God and those things, for the Bible said the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, we surrender our lives totally to God on a daily basis. The thought might cross our mind from time to time, you know, you just like you probably go to church Sabbath and you're not there, yeah. you know, probably sickness and those things, you're not high spirited then. Yeah. Does that mean yeah. you're yeah. not saved? Yeah. The answer yeah. is no. But it shouldn't be a case where every day you're wondering, boy, <laughs> am I saved? Yeah. Then that cause for you yeah. know concern. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you know, problem. if it crosses your mind occasionally, let not that be, you know, a stumbling block in your way. Yes. You are doing what God expects of you and those things, you're living your life in harmony with this principle, then you know, it is safe to say you on heaven's road, right? Mm -hmm. So don't entertain the thought. Yeah. You know, yeah. push it aside. Another thing too, we shouldn't always rely on our feelings That's That's right. next because the, Bi the Bible says the devil can set up doubts in our minds mm -hmm. based on what he puts up. So he may set up something here and there making us feel that, hey, I don't think I'll, mm -hmm. I'll make it to heaven. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not knowing that you're actually doing what God asks you to do. Yeah. So you don't rely on that. You rely on what the Word of God says yeah, and you yeah. align yourself to what the Word of God says. That's right. right. So the Bible stipulates the um, things that you need to do in order to be saved. Mm -hmm. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, be baptized. Mm -hmm. You can, if you do that and you keep walking in the Lord, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to feel fine. The Bible says you are fine. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. don't rely on your feelings to make sure that you're saved. Very well. And you know, there's a thing that also reminds us that it is God who works in us, mm -hmm. um, both to will and to do His good pleasure. Um, so even the performing of good acts um, doesn't come about by us. Yeah, but it's about God mm -hmm. living in us. So at the end of the day, young people, you cannot do anything to be saved. God already provided a gift. As Travis rightly said, submit, surrender to God, um, align yourself with God's words, and um, salvation will be yours for the taking. Amen. We want to look at final question. Time is fast spent. Final one. Um, I think it's very relevant for the time we are living in. Um, we want to look at quickly number four. Um, Brother Kelvis, you want to read on for us? Right. <laughs> he four. says, um, I'm a 19-year-old girl and have feelings for the same sex. I am afraid to tell anyone. What do I do? All right, you, you want to read it again for us? All right, I am a 19 year old girl and have feelings for the same sex. Mm -hmm. I am afraid to tell anyone. What do I do? All right, so let us say that is a seven day Adventist. Well, as I'm just to cut a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can also add to that. Eh? Add to it, yes. There are folks who have feelings for elder folks who have feelings for children as well. True. All right? And of course, you know, a, a man might have feelings for a man and those things. Mm -hmm. So he goes far and wide. Mm -hmm. You know, or even probably a spouse might be attracted to another spo a spouse for another person. True. You true. know? True. Yeah, oftentimes we just growing well, probably homosexual feelings, but yeah. you know, sexual goes, yeah, is wide. That is wide. So no. is that would we say that someone um, being faced with those thoughts, um, is something wrong with them? Um, are they an alien? Are they just wicked and bad mind? Um, are these thoughts that would that can plague a mm. Christian trying to follow God? Is it possible to be faced with those thoughts? Yes. You would say yes. But one may ask, why should a, question, um, a Christian be thinking about that? <laughs> question mm. is a temptation. Mm. So it's a temptation? Yes. Mm. So a Christian can be tempted with even the worst of sins? Yeah. Okay. And um, it's a good reminder that um, we should always embrace the fact that we are flawed. Mm -hmm. You know, every one of us, we have a different weakness. That's right. um, for some, it might be stealing. Others, it might be gossiping. Others, it might be um, homosexuality. Um, others, it might be unfaithfulness to God. But we all have a sin problem. 
So even if someone confides in us, the first response should never be to bash them mm -hmm. and make them feel out of the ordinary. But we all are sinners, so there is some kind of common ground you know, that, that we all have. Um, so the person is afraid to tell anybody. What would you tell mm -hmm. Should they speak to somebody, confide in somebody? Um, yeah. Can we trust people in this day and age? <laughs> I think. And what would your prayer be like in a situation like that? Well, <laughs> what would your prayer be in a situation like that? Um, well, the prayer, first of all, you need to... Think the, about that prayer properly. Yeah, <laughs> <that's thinking laughs> about first of all, you need, um, well... <laughs> Brother Daniel, if we're in a situation like that, what would your prayer go be like? Um, what are you telling God, boy? You think God wants to hear that prayer, boy? Well, okay, I'll help them out. All right, let me hear your prayer. So, for someone who probably has homosexual tendency, mm -hmm. and you're a Bible-believing Christian Adventist, mm -hmm. and you know the word, you know that that's bad, and that's mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. Simple and plain. So, what I would pray is that, God, um, you know my tendencies, you know the struggles that I'm going through. Could you please help me to align my life and my tendencies to your word? Mm -hmm. Take away these evil thoughts, these evil temptations that is trying to mm -hmm. guide me away from you. And help your Holy Spirit to lead me and strengthen me in your path. Very good, very good. All right, Pastor, and um, in addition, uh, <laughs> well, I think it was said earlier on, you know, that this individual prayed, you know, that God would subside or... Uh, make dormant the feeling and you know resurrected you know when the need <laughs> is required in marriage but um you know we also have to remember paul when he had the the son in his flesh mm -hmm. right and the bible says he sought the lord three times mm -hmm. to remove the son but the lord didn't remove it he said my strength my or my grace rather sufficient, is yeah. sufficient for thee and my strength is made perfect in in weakness in, mm -hmm. in your weakness on this thing right so we need to know that god our understanding of God is there, you know, even in our lowest of moments and those things. Yeah. All right. And, you know, sometimes we have to accept that we will go through things in this life, especially as Christian, because um, it's strange enough the Bible says that, you know, when you go through the, the water, it's not overflowed, you right? Mm -hmm. And the fires, you know, the flames, you know, wouldn't kindle. It didn't say you not go through the water. All right. You take a boat and go over and think. Or probably you know probably fly over with a plane but you have to go through but You're god will be there he's there with right you. yeah i don't think for once you know um you're probably strange because you're correct we are all born in sin and ship iniquity yeah and you see the effects of sin i don't think a lot of people understand that you know right in terms of the extent you know and the implication of sin it goes far and wide mm -hmm. and no one is immune so it affects us in different ways yes mm -hmm. you know we don't look down on someone who lives like a, in a chronic you know in green liar you know mm -hmm. for anything and because they like they could probably cause a whole nation to be destroyed mm -hmm. we don't see that probably wrong you know we probably say as clever you know <laughs> yeah probably someone that has a stealing problem but you know the whole homosexual thing you know it has been it's like a taboo yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know and um a lot of people you know tend to keep away you know but we have to see in the every same exactly. Yeah. We have to see every person as a potential candidate for heaven. Mm -hmm. All right. So, mm -hmm. and probably even the church may not be even prepared, you know, to yeah. deal with those things. Yeah. We yeah. baptize people, right? And of course, people out there in the world, right? Homosexual. We might baptize them as well. They come into the church and those things. That feeling may not go away. So, how do we tolerate them? Yeah. Right. We have to really ask God, you know, for. The spirit of wisdom i'm not a counselor or such right but um what i would say to that person that um nothing is wrong with you in terms of you know as if you're an alien mm -hmm. all right it's just another type of feeling it just like if you have a craving probably for for stealing mm -hmm. right it's just mm -hmm. another type of craving on this thing and god is able to bring your body or to give you the strength mm -hmm. right that's right to that's present right. your body a living that's sacrifice right. that's right all that's right? right and um even if the feeling doesn't go away even in your lifetime, but ask God, you know, to give you the strength not to give in. Mm -hmm. And that is where the sin comes in. It's when we give in. Yeah, All right? Yeah. Yes, you might be angry, but the Bible says sin not. Sin not. Yeah, right? Yeah. So we must understand that. And as a church, you know, we have to embrace 
because it might do things that will make a bad situation worse than this thing. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So be mindful of that. All right. We have to tread cautiously with certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, we just want to look at some comments before you wrap up um, quickly. Um, Colin is saying, too often we become comfortable in sin or in making mistakes that our conscience accepts it as being okay. And, and that's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes we, we could wallow in sin that the right um, that wrong seems right. We're yeah. so comfortable. Um, God has not punished us so far, so it's okay. And um, definitely we need to be aware of that. Um, Chanel is saying that, Sister Chase is saying that, you know, we shouldn't tell anybody if you have this tendency, but mm -hmm. you should rather pray to God and ask Him to <laughs> overcome. And um, I agree in a sense with her, <laughs> is that in the world we live in, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, nobody could give us the strength to really overcome. True. Mm -hmm. However, it depends on how overwhelmed we are. Mm -hmm. We may need someone who might be trained in the area mm -hmm. to help us navigate through those feelings. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think we should just go and tell any and everybody. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's a serious thing. You could be branded for the rest of your life. Um, you might face some serious, long-lasting consequences. So even in talking, we should pray and ask God to lead us to you know, the right people. And we shouldn't just talk. But you should talk to the people that can actually help us. And in addition, Pastor, um, you know, try not to... If you are a lady, you know, try to only be around ladies and those things, right? That's right. That's Don't right. add to the temptation, yeah. all right? Yeah. But rather yeah. subtract it and those things because that's right. That's right. the Bible said, as you behold, you become change, mm -hmm. right? And it goes both ways. So if you have a feeling, if you do things, you could amplify it. And if you do other things now, based on what you do, you can what? Suppress it. That's right. And that is what, you know, you seek to do to suppress it and those things. Mm -hmm. Because, um... You see, the pen of inspiration said, right, that um, that's in picture of some prophet, that when you do one act once, mm -hmm. then it's easier to do, the time, do it a second time. Again, that's true. Right? Yeah. And we must understand that. So mm -hmm. the best yeah. thing is not get into it. Yeah. And that was basically, place. you know, um, support in terms of not trying to venture into the world to get a taste. You know, because you might just come comfortable and say, boy, I was missing out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, so the best thing you know to stay where you are on this thing. Yeah. Um, Sister Sean is saying um, we all have an area of weakness. Um, that's true. The decision to talk to somebody trustworthy. She has three full stops there. Mm -hmm. I guess Paul, take your time there. <laughs> Pray like Paul. The mm -hmm. things I shouldn't do, I do them no more. God already knows. Demonstrate your faith by praying to God. And um, as I said, it's very hard to find trustworthy persons. You know, especially with those sensitive issues. And um, we should also see God's Council and is leading there. I believe that there is a time and place to actually seek help. Eh? Mm -hmm. I don't believe in facing all the battles um, in life on our own. Mm -hmm. um, God plays spiritual mentors, He gifted persons with um, professional advice. Sometimes they are relevant, but we need to do so cautiously, especially in those areas. Um, so, friend, we have come almost to the end of our segment tonight. Um, we looked at some very relevant, pertinent topics. And the, the program really was geared to show that young people, we can make wise decisions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed, choices are limited, um, we don't have all the information, all the experience. But as long as you have the Bible, as long as we are willing to look at what is our goal, heaven at last, as long as we are willing to align ourselves with the will of God, the decisions become clearer and clearer and clearer. And I really do hope that whatever situation you may find yourself in, know that the Word of God has an answer. Um, God's Holy Spirit is present with us. Um, he's a present help in our time of trouble. Amen. Surround ourselves with spiritually minded people that can encourage us and not you know, push us further and further into the pits of sin and even to a place of trouble. So we really do pray that our sitting mm -hmm. here tonight indeed was a very um, beneficial one for you. And I pray that even as we just look at the steps quickly again, that you'll be able to practice them in your life. First, when you have a decision, notice your goal. Secondly, Take time to clarify the issue. Know exactly what the problem is. Thirdly, consider the options and with the consequences. Fourthly, examine what does the Bible say about that mm -hmm. problem. Fifth, take time to pray so that as you read the word of God, you'll have the strength and the obedience to apply. And after finish praying, feeling the leading of God, it is that time to make your decision. We want to leave with a quick session of prayer. Um, we want to pray that our youth will be able to make um, sound and solid decisions. And of course, we also want to keep in mind our upcoming conference session that God will continue to lead out and have his way. 
Um, so we're going to have two prayers tonight. We're going to ask Daniel. You're going to say a prayer for our young people tonight that God will give them the wisdom to make sound decisions. And I'm going to ask Brother Kelvis, pray for the upcoming session that God will have this week. Allowing us to go to church today, thank you for this wonderful program we had done. Lord, we ask you to be with us as you swear. Forgive us for the wrong we have done okay. in thoughts, words, action, and day. Lord, and help us to make some decisions so that it would in increase and help in our Christian life instead of decrease it further. We ask you to please be with even the older folks leading us. Help them to set a right example so that we could follow. And for the end, we all be saved in your eternal kingdom, yes. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, we linger in your presence even another moment. Thanking you, the Lord, for the establishment of your church, O Lord, and not leaving it, the Lord, to its own devices, or the Lord, mm -hmm. in a disoriented way, a disorganized way. We thank you, the Lord, for the blessing of organization. And the Lord, you would have put in place men to govern and lead your church, O oh Lord, in these difficult times. You are looking for men, the Lord, who cannot be bought a soul, who would, the Lord, stand though the heavens fall. And even as we enter yet, the Lord, in another conference session in our local conference in Grenada, we pray, Lord, that biasness would Amen. be pushed aside Amen. and the Lord ulterior motive would be suppressed Amen. and the Lord you would have your way that men would be selected who has the Lord the interest of the proclamation of the gospel at heart and whose total reliance is on you and dependence your Lord I pray that your spirit would walk within the minds of all those involved and the Lord will can pray that the best possible result will prevail so as we live in this time your church the Lord will not be on the defensive not even on pause but going for the God on to conquer that there will be new your Lord challenges undertaken and there will be the Lord new areas of improvement and even establishment. Bless the Lord the session and the Lord may all understand that it is you that set up king and take down king and the Lord give it in to whoever you desire. So give us the ability the Lord to accept the Lord the prompting of your Holy Spirit so that there will be good sense the Lord and good harmony prevailing. I pray the Lord that the session will act in the best interest of the growth of your church. So do it, the Lord, the upcoming session. And I pray the Lord that your church would even experience revival because of the Lord, the activity and the different exercises. And those who be elected, I pray that they will rise to the occasion and allow you, the Lord, to totally use them for your glory. Take for control, guide us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for tuning in to tonight's episode. And we thank you for your comments, your presence, your support, and even sharing in the ministry. Thanks for inviting your friends. And thanks for staying right on to the end. We thank our panelists tonight. Um, four young men, young men of promise, the leaders of even today and tomorrow. We're very happy for your service tonight. And we really do pray that God will continue to richly bless this ministry. We want to thank our technical staff, Brother Leroy, Brother Kenling, Brother Hamish on the piano. We had some difficulties, but by the grace of God, they persevered, and our program tonight was a success. May God Amen. bless you. Have a happy Sabbath. Until next time, Youth Live Unplugged.
honor you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Help me share your love and grace in all I do. Lord, I come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Let me share your love and grace in all I do Oh Lord, transform me Change my heart completely to
come before you with contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Lord, I come before you with contrite heart I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Let me show your love and grace in all I do Oh Lord, transform me Change my heart completely to Yeah.